My name is Ed Smith. I'm an assistant strength coach here at Weber International, and I'll be speaking about movement before muscle training. Here's what I'll cover today. Uh, what is movement? Who can benefit from movement training? The 10 main movement patterns that I use. Training for life. Training for, for an athlete. Just a simple programming. Attacking weaknesses. And last but not least, injury prevention. What is movement? Uh, being able to move efficiently through pain-free range of motion. That, that's key here um, with working with athletes, working with anybody in the general population. Key for me is uh, that pain-free uh, range of motion. Who can benefit from movement training? Your everyday dad who has to get down in a, a deep squat just to play a little game of uh, wiffle ball out the back, door, back with, with his kids. The dad that wants to throw his kid up in the air, play a little airplane. Or even the elderly lady who just come back from the grocery store, has to carry her groceries up two or three flights of stairs, needs to be, be able to move well. For me, most, most importantly, outside of the general population, it's going to be my athletes. You got a catcher sitting in a deep squat. Uh, I'll be willing to bet he does thousands of squats in a game. Wide receivers, being able to push, hold, brace, some of those words you'll hear later on, uh, any, any opponent that we have to go against. And then our women's soccer players, being able to jump in the air while also being able to brace this contact from somebody else and still making contact on the ball, being able to play uh, all the time. The body movements that I use, push, Pull, hinge, carry, uh, or bracing, and then rotation. Your push and pull can be broken up into lower body, upper body, uh, horizontal, vertical. Same for both push and pull, upper, upper, horizontal, and vertical. And lastly, the rotation, anti-rotation, and then dynamic rotation movements. In all sports or in all daily living activities, you're going to do each one of these movements at some point. The next few slides I'll go over the, the simple movements, how I go about classifying them, and kind of show you a little bit of how sometimes they're interchangeable. Starting with the push, we've got a bench press for the uh, upper horizontal push, just a dumb, dumbbell bench press, working the anterior delts. Uh, pec major and triceps. The lower push, just a single leg, uh, rear foot elevated squat here, uh, working the glute max, glute knee, and then the quadriceps. And finally, the, the upper vertical push, just a standard dumbbell uh, shoulder press, working the delts, rotator cuff, and, and the triceps. As you can see, we're going through movements. But we're also training the, the muscles and training more than one muscle at a time. So that's key for me. Limited time in the weight room, trying to get the most bang for my buck. Pulling exercises. This is the top side of a deadlift. A bent over row, dumbbell row, and then a, a, a chin up there. With your lower pull, that deadlift, working the traps for stabilization, lats for engaging the back, glute max, hamstrings and quads, on the lower half to stand the body up. As you can see, more of a total body, top to bottom, bang for your buck exercise. Upper horizontal pull, like I said, the dumbbell, bent over row, lats, rhomboids, biceps, rear delt, traps. Again, hitting just about everything on the back side for that athlete. Finally, upper ver uh, vert vertical pull with the lats, Terry's major, and the biceps brachii there. Hinge. This is probably one of the, the most important movements for me. For me. Too many athletes want to work on everything that they can see in a mirror. For me, it's making sure we got a strong posterior chain, top to bottom, on the back side. Here you can see this. Uh, it's an RDL, a hip hinge movement. 
Simply all the motion is going to come through your hips. Slight knee bend, hips back, pushing back as far as you can, coming back tall. Working that backside, good stretch, uh, eccentrically in those hamstrings, working semi membranosis, semi tendinosis, uh, biceps from Morris. Erector spine aid, make sure our back's tight, being able to uh, go ahead and erect that spine back tall. Adductor magnus, lats, and then rhomboids for stabilizing that upper back through full range of motion. That's key for me. I uh, want to eliminate any possible uh, injuries that could come with uh, any of my exercises. Carries. These are incorporated in every lift that I do uh, with anybody outside. Outside, Sometimes uh, if we're, we got other heavy exercises built into the workout, I won't throw these in. But a lot of times, here you see a suitcase carry. It's hard to read some of this here, but just talking about Keeping that core tight, up tall, shoulder blades pinned back, keeping a, a double chin, what I like to say double chin, keeping that, that C spine in, in good alignment through all the way down the spine. Don't carry your, don't carry your weight right on your side. To me, this athlete, I would tell them just carry it a little bit away from you. That way you have to brace a little bit more. Okay? Full engage, you don't have to take big long steps. Just get a good, good bracing effect on it. Every time you pick up your foot, you're going to be a little bit off stable, and you'll have to re-brace every time you step with the opposite foot. Farmer's carry, did you see this guy's carrying a very large amount of weight? Most likely a lot of my athletes won't be carrying crazy weight like this, but I do use farmer's carries, whether it's with dumbbells or I uh, have any sort of dump, like a barbell, that I would load up some weight on either end and carry and then an overhead carry, sometimes I alternate this up with a little lower, lower weight on the, on the top side, heavier weight on the bottom, give them an uneven carry, uh, a little variation on the overhead carries, just to get some good shoulder stability and uh, some, some core work outside of our body. And our rotation and rotation exercises, some of you might think, well, not all athletes need to work on this because some of them are bracing their uh, your track athlete where they're just running straight lines. Well, to me, there's some sort of rotation and movement whether you need to brace it or you need to move through it. Okay, so I'll, I'll use these exercises no matter the athletes I'm working with and use them all the time. Payoff press, just a simple, have a cable running left or right to you. Get a good athletic stance, press the, press the, the cable away from you. Resist back and forth. You might come in as a, as a coach, bounce them around a little bit, and get a little bit of more of a core engaged there, making sure too, too often I see athletes way outside. You're never going to play in this. That's the first thing I say to them. We're never going to play with our feet outside of our base. Why do we want to train like that? Go ahead, bring them in, good athletic base. Hips back. 90% of sports are start in that athletic base. Go ahead, sit those hips back. And our rotation. Here's just a split stance, moving through range of motion now. So we're gonna go split stance, open up, grabbing down with the cable, pull it up tall, and press overhead, press out front, anywhere to kind of get that core to need to brace in different planes of motion. Okay. Finally, uh, standard you'll see these just about any, any gym you go to, just regular medicine ball rotations. You can start with simple uh, Parallel, where the wall's straight in front of you, and you're just coming off the hip, working that rotation. You go a perpendicular toss. Here, this athlete's more of just a, a, a progression of, of a medicine ball rotation, where he's actually stepping into it off the back foot, working through the wall there. You can turn that into a crow hop, or any variation that you would want as you progress your athletes. Back to what I was talking about with the training the general public. I like to use this same model if I'm going to train any kind of general public. Uh, I really started coming up with this model after seeing some different, some different uh, at different at different conferences. People like Dan John and stuff like that. They training just to make sure we're getting a holistic approach and using this to train uh, just your everyday athlete or anybody. So for training for life, efficient movements, being able to stand up and sit down. Every day, uh, whether you're an office worker, whether you're somebody that's working hard on long hours, you still got to be able to sit down and stand up efficiently without the ache and pain, pushing up off the chair, uh, hurting yourself. Effective movement. 
going back to that, those pictures with uh, the, the two gentlemen having fun with their family, that's key for me. I want to be able to, when I'm 30, 40, 50 years old, able to enjoy, enjoy time with my family outside, indoors, being able to move still. Reduce injury risk. A lot of times, athletes turn into weekend warriors where they're working their uh, eight-hour days, get off work, go to the gym, YMCA, pick up a basketball, turn in, turns into a competitive game. We want to make sure that we're being able to move effectively through all our ranges of motion to reduce this injury risk. Handling just general accidents in the winter, stepping outside on a sheet of ice, being able to Slide on that sheet of ice and catch yourself, being able to brace through any motions. You get knocked over at the beach by a wave, being able to take that wave on. You know, anything could happen at any time, so being able to be able to brace any kind of movements outside of just your general everyday movements can help. Uh, and then ultimately feeling better with a healthier living and looking better uh, for your general population give you higher confidence. With my athletes, first and foremost, I want to eliminate any injury risks. Okay? My athletes aren't on the field. They're not going to help the team. Thus, my job is going to be in jeopardy. <clears throat> Again, moving effect effectively and efficiently. Effective and efficiently. <clears throat> helps avoid any wasted movements. So, if I got my athletes running, uh, soccer athletes, for instance, do, uh, even the, the baseball team that I work with, I work with. If I just got them running and they're beating all over the place, they're not getting from point A to point B uh, efficiently. So making sure we're getting to point A to point B, whatever movements we got in a game, we're able to handle those uh, very efficiently. High performance. Uh, that's from the top down. Coaches want your wants your program to help them perform on the field. As a strength coach, I still want to see my teams succeed. So everything we do in the weight room is to not only make them better at their sport, but more importantly, make them a better holistic athlete. Better condition. Uh, most of us know that most injuries are going to come in a fatigued state. And that's why you'll see later on in my workouts when I go over some things. That I, do, I try to do my injury prevention stuff in a fatigued state. Try to prepare the body to adapt to those situations. And then ultimately, still athletes want to feel better and look better as well. The next three slides are just going to kind of go over how I go about programming. This is not exactly, but this is a great, great start to where you can do. I'll tell you a little bit of modifications along the way. But if I got two days, two days with my athletes uh, in season, a lot of times it'll be one or two days. So I got to kind of use this model here where I'm going to try to get a total body and a total body. Get the most bang for my butt, be able to get them in and get them out. All right. So I'll start with something like a lower push. Uh, as you can see, it'll kind of flip flop between days. If I got a lower push to start here, I'll start with a lower pull, top to bottom. That'll be the emphasis for my day, okay? So lower push would be my heavy emphasis on day one, lower pull on day two, but I'll have some sort of supplemental exercise, whether I superset it, um, or I use some sort of uh, mobility, stability thing to superset in there opposite. Again, hinging motions, whether it's a good morning, whether that hip hinge, barbell up top, band, anything like that, RDL, uh, any kind of waiter's bow, anything hip hinging. Upper horizontal push, you can see, is, a, is an emphasis here on the upper body, where upper vertical pull on the other day is going to be the, the emphasis, and they will flip-flop back and forth, as you can see. You can kind of cross them out there. Just helps you make sure you're covering your bases all the way through. As you can see, horizontal push with a pull, push with a pull, push with a pull. Carries, again, uh, on day one, I might use a farmer's carry where I'm using two dumbbells. Day two, I might go uh, alternate with an upper body uh, or an upper carry and a lower carry. Or I might do a zercher carry where I got a dumbbell, I mean a, a barbell through the, through the elbows, carrying and bracing there. Uh, just different loads on the athlete trying there. And again, at the end of the workout, 
I'm going to go ahead, like I said a minute ago, I'm going to go ahead and throw in my injury prevention and weaknesses. We'll go over some of those, that stuff at, at the end of the, the, the presentation. Again, like I said, I'm working through day two as I was working through day one. They both kind of cross out each other, make sure we're hitting everything and getting a total body on both days. If I got injury prevention on day one, I might hit some weakness areas uh, for those athletes on day two. Some of those might cross the same paths. For a three day, all right, looks a lot, sim lot, lot similar on that day one, but I'm gonna do uh, more of a lower body emphasis here, uh, upper body horizontal pull emphasis, and upper, upper body vertical pull emphasis on a day three. As you can see there across the top, uh, those, are the, the, those are my most important exercises on those days. And I'll, I'll throw in my hip hinge um, on most of the days. Some of you might be thinking, okay, when are you gonna throw in, you know, if you use, if you use this kind of diagram or model, whatever you wanna call it, as for your Olympic lifts, where are you gonna put those? Are you going to put those in your hinge on, on a third exercise? No, I don't have to do that. I will put it as a hinge exercise because just about every, every hinging, ex every uh, Olympic movement, whether it's a snatch or a clean, if I'm going to do the jerk, I'll just use it as my upper, uh, upper vertical push and go ahead and put it up on the top. Okay. So I can move these. They don't have to stay in the same spot. It'll just be because it is a power exercise and I want to get... I want to get the most out of the athletes. I'll pop it to the top. There might be times later, coming closer to the season, to where I want to see their, their power endurance. So I might put it here in that third category after we've got a little bit tired and, and see, what, see what we can get out of the athletes, making sure they're ready for their season to where we're powerful all the way through the game, not just in the first half for my women's soccer or not just in any one for the baseball guys or even the football team not just in the first half, second half, we're able to, to hold up um, on, our, on our power endurance. Again, injury prevention, you can see alternates back and forth, injury prevention, weakness, and then I'll do a, a, a more of a total injury and weakness areas for the athletes. Hopefully, uh, we can keep these pretty much limited to keys that I see whenever I'm doing it in my evaluations. I'm going to use these movements in an evaluation at the beginning of the, of the semesters and see where our athletes are at and moving on there. <clears throat> the four-day plan looks a lot like the two-day plan uh, in reference to day one and day two pretty much being flip-flopped for day three and day four. All right, Carries, I'll, I'll alternate what kind of carries I'm going to do. I'll alternate my anti-rotation with my rotation, anti-rotation, rotation. Hinging exercises, they can be the same. Most likely, uh, I'll try to vary those up a little bit. If they are the same, the volume uh, of the exercise will be different. Attacking those weakness areas. Uh, so back in the, in the workout, these weaknesses there. Attacking those. For me, it's going to be fixing those movement patterns. All right, coordination, using neurological sequencing, making sure that the athlete is, is getting done what we need in each of the movements. Pinpointing weakness areas. These are, these are the key weakness areas that I've seen in, in my short career. Uh, glutes, ankle mobility, scapular stability, and T-spine mobility. Uh, I got T-spine mobility at the end, but I probably see that more with my athletes as a whole, being able to move, rotate, come up top with the T-spine. Um, and then this ankle mobility, a lot of times people say you, their hips are messed up when they get in a squat, you look at them and then their ankles are locked in, straight vertical. You tell them to go over to do a wall tap, they can't get an inch away from the wall. So those two key areas there for me, uh, ankle mobility and T-spine mobility. <clears throat> with my women, that glutes. Okay. That's going to be a, a key for me. Make sure those glutes are firing, those knees aren't diving in. They already have uh, wide hips, so more prone to those ACL injuries. But women, more on the glutes. Progression and regression of exercises. Use this exercise to help correct patterns. Uh, the kind of the Dan John approach. Uh, 
heard Dan John speak at the conference this year, and he, he was talking about how use the same motions, movements, but regress the exercise. So if a person can't get in a full deep squat with a barbell, get a kettlebell, load them up, get them in the bottom position. You don't even have to start them with the kettlebell. Have them squat down in the bottom position, grab the kettlebell off the ground, push out on the knees, stand there, stand up tall, drive out of the bottom. Okay? Use, up, use the same movements with different loads and different uh, ways to load the pattern and make sure you're getting full correct movement patterns. <clears throat> Injury prevention. Like I said, in a fatigue state. Because that for me is when the most common time, and for everybody, not just me, common time where you're going to see those non-contact injuries, those ACL injuries where you're running, you take off, trying to make a cut, go back, boom, your, your quad's not firing, your posterior chain's not firing to keep uh, that ACL safe. Make sure that you know the common injuries to the sport. All right? You know, baseball players with their shoulder, or make sure they got good scapular control for your pitchers. Um, strong rotator cuffs, depending on how much they're pitching. Uh, their genders, you know, like I talked about with the female athlete. Wide hips, automatically cue angles uh, going to make them more prone for ACL injuries. So knowing your genders. Body types, whether you got a huge dude uh, weighing 300 pounds, or you got a, a a girl who is weighing a buck, a buck maybe 100 pounds, and she needs some more muscle type. So you got to work on getting her some more muscles to to be able to explode, to be able to handle any kind of jumping patterns. And then using the joint by joint approach. Uh, kind of talked about it back with the glutes and stuff, glutes, ankles, scaps, you know, top to bottom. Ankle mobility, knee stability, hip mobility, you know, up the chain. Most of us have heard this before, uh, but I like to make sure that I'm covering those bases through my injury prevention and all the way. And then a lot of time for cool down and stretch, all right? See too many times, workout's over, boom, boom, we're out. Yeah, you don't have to program this into your workout. Educate your athletes and allow them to understand that this cool down time and your stretching needs to be taken seriously. We shouldn't as strength coaches have to do this all the time. All right? If you're seeing that your athletes aren't getting it done, then maybe you start working on incorporating it in. Okay. That's pretty much how I go about uh, working with my athletes. I use it for the general population too. All right? Like I said, uh, what made me think about this uh, using this model is seeing different presentations for people like Dan John, but then also uh, my, my mother coming up and saying, I just want a general workout, but I want to make sure that I'm covering everything. And so I sat down, started writing it out, and you said, know what, you know what, this, this, this will work for anybody. All that other stuff outside of how the program's designed, uh, what kind of rep schemes, you know, what kind of methodology you're going to use, all that can be still incorporated in. As you've seen in all that stuff, I didn't have any sets, I didn't have any reps, I didn't need any of that, all right? Because that comes after, all right? All that can be determined on what those athletes need at the time, and that may vary from person to person, definitely vary from team to team, but this is how I use um, myself when I'm doing my programming. Um, big thank you to Coach Raz and the Weber staff here with Coach Brett Warsham, the other assistant, uh, interns and coaching assistants uh, help me every day. And then my sports coaches, all right? Baseball, women's soccer, uh, I have two great coaches that like what I do. I try to help them as much as possible, and, and the athletes seem to be buying into the programs that I use. Uh, Back to my mentor at, at Salisbury, Matt Nye. Big thanks to him. Learned a lot from him. And probably the most important one, so I'm third in line, my family. All right. So without them, I wouldn't be here. Here's my contact information. Uh, be sure if you have any questions. Um, if you're seeing this on video, feel free to reach out anytime. And um, anything outside of that, uh, we'll be glad to contact you back as soon as possible.